everybody! It is Tuesday! Oops, what did I do with my phone? Hang on one second, I'll be right back. I'm still with you. Forgot my other device there. Hey, Jennifer and Kitty, how are you? Good to have you all with us. Angie, Asheville Angie's with us. Good to have you with us. Okay, now I'm all combobulated. How are we all doing tonight, this Tuesday? Terrific Tuesday. Hey, Jeremy, Karen. Cheers, everybody. Good to have you all with us. Russ, good to have you. I think you've had a busy day. Hey, Pat and the Peanut Gallery. Good to have you join us. Great to have everybody here tonight on this terrific Tuesday. How's things at Marquee, Jeremy? I hope things are well with you. It is a good day. Another terrific day. Yeah, Kitty. It was. It was a good day again. It was. We, we had another good day here in Massachusetts. You know, uh, it was, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll make you laugh, Kitty, but I, but I know you'll relate. It was nice to actually be able to take a deposit, you know, cash money to the bank. Um, that was uh, something uh, something that was truly different and, and nice today to be able to do that. Hey, Michelle, I'm glad that you're here live. You know, you can just reach out anytime you want. You're my, you're, you know, I know I'm one of your heroes, and I'm okay. I'll take you anytime. Jana's with us. Crystal, it's a plum of a night when Crystal's with us. Cheers to Laura. Joanne is with us. 83 drops today. I like that. I do like that, Angie. You know, one of our afternoon people came in, or actually she's afternoon to early evening. She works a couple days a week, 4 to 7. Um, and... Uh, she came in this afternoon and our back room at clothing was packed with baskets and she she was like wow and um but it wasn't you know it was not a lot of stuff but it wasn't overwhelming it at any given point it wasn't overwhelming so uh that is that is uh uh different Yes, it was. It was. It is an awesome feeling, Kitty. It was really, really nice to to be able to take cash, and that's another surprising thing: is the amount of cash uh, has remained high. You know, people are coming in with cash money. Uh, that surprised me. You know, they said that everything's going to be contactless, and people are going to want contactless payments, and you should upgrade your payment machines if they can't take contactless payments so that you can take it. But that's, uh, you know, we have seen a good amount of good old-fashioned cash, so I'm happy with that. Oh, that's great, Jeremy. I'm glad to hear that. Um, th yeah, I mean, sales, sales, you know, I mean, we're two days into it, you know, I mean, I was taking calls today and, and people were asking, you know, about the consignment and which time is busy for drop off. And I'm like, well, with two days of data, 10 o'clock is busy, you know, 11 o'clock is busy. You know, after that, it, it peters out. Now, tomorrow's can be completely different than that. But, you know, that's right at 10 o'clock when we start taking things is what it's been busy. Hey, Nancy, how are you? Good to have you tonight. Sorry I missed you. I am in your voicemail, um, but uh, we'll catch up. Um, but uh, Laurel's watching. I love that Laurel's watching. Great to have you with us, Laurel. But it was it was in extremely nice to be able to go see my bankers, not be withdrawing money, but uh, bringing money, actual cash. That was that was uh, 
That was the grateful thing of today. So what is everybody else grateful for this Tuesday? Tell me about it. Tell me what we are grateful for this Tuesday. It can be. I, I still expect it, you know, while we're all having a couple of uh, our, our first two days are off to a great start. I am not, uh, Jennifer, even though I am literally taking that to the bank, um, I am not uh, betting on that we won't have roller coasters. Even uh, Cassandra was like, oh, it felt slow, and then we got busy. You know, it, um, she was in home decor today. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, it, there, it, there is uh, that feeling. But it was never, you know, we were busy. People are buying a lot. Um, I, I'll have to post a, uh, one of the shopping carts later uh, to show you how overflowing the, uh, and that's been our typical shopping cart. That's where things are backing up is at the register um, because we are, because so many people, because the item count is so high. Again, it's a problem, but it's a good problem to have. Ah, yes, Julie, that, that first run of payroll in months. That, I get that. That's awesome, Laurel, I love it. You have a great team, great people, great people. I always love seeing what Alyssa's doing and your people. You have some great people. Oh, that's great, Michelle. Two new hires today. I got to do some interviewing. So I, I, have, uh, I have some slots to fill because I'm going to grow my way out of this. Grow my way out of this. I have, uh, definitely have some slots to fill and uh, figuring out uh, uh, you know, what, what each uh, area that we're going to do. But uh, we're definitely going to grow our way out of this. Hey, Vina's with us tonight. Vina is with us. What else is everybody grateful for? That, that's some pretty good stuff right there. That is some very good stuff uh, at the top of the show tonight of what people are grateful for. Uh, Joanne's got open Friday. Friday and Saturday were great. Slowed down in sales. Tons coming in and Facebook Live is still good. That's all good. It's all good. You know, the, the best days are ahead of us, not behind us. The best days are ahead. I promise you that. Okay, don't look this in the rearview mirror. The best days are ahead for us. And that's what it's all about. That, that is what it is all about. Oh, I like this one. We start every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start the night. And tonight in our Good Morning, Good Night book, we turn the page to Good Morning. Don't get stuck in the common section of life today. Make do. Create the things. Let others tussle it out. Vamos! That is our Good Morning. Oh, that's awesome, Vina, that you were able to hand deliver a goodie bag to an ill customer today. It goes so far um, with people, you know, when you can do something, you know, that makes them feel special. And, uh, you know, we had an employee, you know, not something we, we were set up for, um, but... Um, they called yesterday and they... Um, the customer called yesterday and was like, you know, can't come in contact with anybody, wants to be completely contactless, but wanted to consign. And she set it up with them today to come and do, you know, that we would have our baskets, you know, they call when they got here and we would have our baskets for them and our contract and everything. And, and she had it outside for them. They came and got it and uh, then filled our baskets to, to the way we do it. And... Uh, had the contract all filled out and went, everybody was on their way. Everybody was happy and I was really impressed with uh, this uh, young team member that did that for them. That was really great. Hey, Bailey joined us and Adele, I didn't even see you, Adele, uh, you and Dazzle click in there. Good to have you with us. Ah, 
I told you these were coming today. You got to take a look. You got to take a look at our masks here today. They arrived today and were even better than I thought they were going to be. So, you know, our two primary brands, Cutie Patooties and Cutiques, on each side. But look at the adjustable um, ear pieces and the nose bridge. Oops, hang on, I'm not adjusting these right, but that's to be expected. I didn't put mine on yet, I just... Do, 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 do. Styling. Huh? I showed the ribbon on the side. I showed the, I showed the fancy ribbon on the side. I don't want everybody looking in my ear, I mean, but I did show the ribbon in the side. Really came out nice. Um, and, you know, you know, here where you're required to wear a mask, you know, we wanted it in company color and we wanted it to, uh, wanted them uh, so people knew who was working here. You know, I mean, uh, you know, where everybody's walking around with a mask and, you know, everybody has piles of clothes, it really does become, uh, you know, are you, a cust are you an employee putting out piles of clothes or are you uh, an, uh, a, a uh, customer shopping and, you know, hands off this because it's in my cart? Um, so, uh, you know, we, we do have, uh, so we got those and they just arrived late this afternoon. So we're excited to uh, have our team outfitted in that. They look comfortable. Uh, yeah, I'm with you there. I would like not to be wearing one. I'm, I, you know, part of me says, you know, I was talking with a nurse today that worked in the um, OR and she's like, you know, we, we wore masks all the time, you know, um, from the moment we got on shift, we were always wearing masks and everything. And she's like, you get used to it. And part of me doesn't want to get used to it. And uh, in that way, I, I, I like the smile. I like to see your smile and, and your full face. So I don't, part of me does not want to get used to it. Um, I'm not sure where that, where we're going with masks. Um, in an interesting news bit that wasn't part of my news uh, for tonight, but I'll share it. IBM is getting out of facial recognition software, the facial recognition software business, because it's going to heck because of masks. And I, you know, I'd like to think that there's more behind that business decision. That was sort of a convenient thing. I'm not saying like, oh, I'm going to go out of business now because of COVID-19, because the hard work is ahead. You know, there, there's a hard path. It, it, it's easy to say, and nobody will question you, you're going out because now everybody's wearing a mask and, and facial recognition. I think there's some other issues there that they're not saying, but that was the, what they blamed. I want people to, too, Angie. Seeing us smiling at them, um, you know, giving the hugs to the people that need a hug, you know, I miss all that. And you can tell people miss it, too. But um, it, it is important that we be safe, and I, I want people to be safe. But I, I do not enjoy uh, wearing a mask, although I'm, I'm glad I don't work in, like, a sub shop or a, uh, like, there's a pizza place in front of our clothing store. Um, and uh, I couldn't imagine over the grill or the ovens there how hot it get uh, with it. So... Um, that would really bother me, but I digress. I, I fully admit I, I am probably not a long-term mask per person, but while I have to wear one, I'm going to do it stylishly in the pink. Ah, uh, what do we got going on tonight? Um, we got a lot going on. Permanent store closures could hit 25,000 in the year 2020, uh, an industry group says. CoreSight Research estimates that 20 to 25,000 stores could permanently close in the U.S. with 55 to 60 percent of those closures in malls, according to a report. That would be more than double last year's closures, and it represents a significant increase over previous closure estimates for 2020. 
So far, there have been 4,005 plan closures for the year. Um, the firm also expects bankruptcies to rise, including Chapter 7 liquidations. You got to keep in mind that last year, even with the closures, we opened up at least that many stores. So that is part of the thing that doesn't get the news. <laughs> Russ, that is true, but the problem with that is, is, is and, and, you know, mouthing the words through your mask of what, what you want to say to some people is sometimes you'll forget that you're not wearing the mask. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, Lisa in Alaska is joining us. But, you know, so there are stores open. I think that, you know, when they cite last year figures and on store closures, there were there were as many or more stores opening and that gets lost in those figures um i don't think that'll be the case this year um but i when they do look at comparison figures that does get left out and so i i do mention that uh signet and you probably don't know who signet is but signet jewelers is um what is which brands are they they are k zales jared h samuel ernest jones peoples and ah the good old piercing pagoda the pagoda in the mall um they're expected to close nearly 400 stores and um i think they're even doing more than that they're gonna do 100 the they're saying 400 stores this year um uh, with at least 150 stores in North America that won't be opening after the uh, uh, pandemic um, restrictions are eased, um, and expected at least an additional 150 stores in the U.S. They run about 3,200 stores worldwide. Um, again, back to that whole mall thing, um, it's going to be interesting. More than 1,100 of their 3,200 stores are back open, and the company called their performance encouraging uh, with sequential week-over-week -week sales improvements in open stores. Um, while they are saying their um, reopenings are exceeding their expectations, they emphasize that uh, the closures will proceed. And I think that's important because part of that is not the pandemic. Part of that is they were overstored, and so they're using the pandemic as an excuse for that. <laughs> oh, you're great, Michelle. Uh, yeah, Starbucks is closing some stores, too. That is correct, Kitty. It, it, it is a supply chain. We need these people to survive. I mean... You know, people talk about Macy's dying, and I have stuff about them, but, you know, I'll be in meetings with Macy's, um, executives at Macy's, um, where we're down in D.C. advocating for some of the same issues, different size, but I need them to be healthy. Um, we need these stores, Macy's, Nordstrom, need all of them, because that is, our that is our food chain. That is our food chain. Oh, I like that. Nice, Russ. Macy's, uh, well, speaking of Macy's, they're next to my pile. Macy's store openings are better than anticipated. Macy's said on Tuesday that reopenings have exceeded expectations with strong digital business sales continuing throughout May. But June 1st, some 450 stores were open, most in their full format. The department store also said it expects first quarter net sales to reach $3 billion, down from $5.5 billion last year, with a net loss of $652 million down from income last year of 136 million and an operating loss of 969 million down from operating income of 203 million um, so they are they but they are seeing better than anticipated results in stores that have reopened the ability of a group of people to do remarkable, remarkable things hinges on how well those people can pull together as a team. Uh, 
Oh, I like that, An An Asheville Angie. If it works out as a smart business decision, the numbers don't lie, people do. But I'm glad that you're, I am thrilled that you're gaining life. That's important. Twitter releases event calendar for June to assist with strategic planning. Twitter's event calendars are not looking as full as they once did, but there's still various opportunities and promotional tie-ins to consider across key dates in June. Um, and hopefully signs seem positive and we may soon be able to plan ahead again. Um, there are opportunities to consider in June, such as Pride Month. Twitter urges brands to show their support via specific messages that showcases a point of view. Best Friends Day, yesterday. How'd we miss Best Friends Day? Where, where's Marianne and Zach? How'd they let us miss that? June 21st, National Selfie Day. Twitter says that National Selfie Day is the ideal time to encourage your audience to share photos of themselves using your product or service at home. Father's Day, June 21st, who cares about them? A great opportunity to create and share gift guides, exclusive sales, and user-generated contact. And the summer solstice, June 20th. Twitter says that this presents an opportunity to connect with your audience through relevant memes which capture summertime feelings. I want to go back to selfie day. Um, Apple today received a patent, if you did not hear this. Apple today received a, pen, a patent for a synthetic selfie. A synthetic selfie. Hey, Karen, it's good to have you with us. It's okay. Anytime you join us is great. Um, a synthetic selfie. Some of you are asking yourself, what is a synthetic selfie? I know that is exactly what Adele is asking herself. Um, um, a synthetic selfie is your selfie and your friend's selfies and all mashed together. So it blends a selfie. Like I would take a selfie of me. Ah! Okay, I can be a Kardashian too. Um, and then we'd all blend together. It would blend all the selfies together. I don't get it, but I don't get the selfie thing in the beginning. Uh, when, I hand, when I'm out and I need a selfie and I hand my phone to somebody else, Rebecca says that's not a selfie if you ask somebody to selfie you. So, I don't get it. But hey, Diane's joining us. It's all good, Diane. Ah. Pandemic trends and online sale send Michael's stock soaring. The arts and crafts retailer's share price is up more than 50% since Friday. Because the toy and hobby category performs well during recessions and people are also crafting to provide additional income. Fo following a slow start to 2020, Michaels appears to be making up for lost time. The arts and crafts retailer is selling stuff in theory like crazy, or at least they've convinced Wall Street they are. Um, the Fed has expanded Main Street Lending Program to allow both Smaller and bigger loans. How's that? Smaller and bigger. The uh, bank is lowering the minimum loan to 250000 from five hundred and raising the maximum that can be borrowed. Um, the program in and of itself is designed to help businesses that are too big to tap the PPP, but too small to access other avenues of relief offered by the central bank. Companies that were on sound financial footing pre-crisis and only damaged by the virus outbreak can tap the program. Um, supporting small and mid-sized businesses so they are ready to reopen and rehire workers will help foster a broad economic recovery is what our buddy Jay Powell says. Um, and the, the Fed continues to pledge aggressive action to support the U.S. economy. It cost us. I've joined us. I could be a Kardashian too, you think so, Michelle? 
I don't think so. I don't think I got that in me. Let's see what else I got here. Macy's twice in my pile today. Twice Macy's is in my pile. Macy's raises four and a half billion in financing. Macy's said it raised a total of four and a half billion, providing it with sufficient liquidity to fund operations and address business needs as the economy starts to recover. Um, the closing on four and a half billion of new financing, including its previously announced one point three billion of senior notes, as well as a new three point one five billion asset backed credit agreement, which we had talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, with the closing of these financing, Macy's expects to have sufficient liquidity to address the needs of the business, including funding operations and the purchase of new inventory for upcoming merchandise seasons, resolving its accrued payable obligation, and repaying upcoming uh, debt maturities through fiscal 2021. Duncan! Who likes a Duncan? Duncan! Is going on a big hiring initiative. Duncan is launching its first ever advertising campaign focused on employee recruitment. The coffee giant said its franchisees are looking to hire 25,000 new employees from front counter to restaurant management. At the same time, Duncan said it's partnering with Southern New Hampshire University to offer store employees an online college education. The new campaign, Duncan Runs on You, Spots will provide a look at the spirit of teamwork and community, distinguishing jobs at all levels at Duncan restaurants and the extraordinary people who are proud to call themselves Duncan team members. We're proud to support our franchisees with much needed job opportunities in a welcoming environment where people can feel appreciated and rewarded for serving both customers and their communities during this critical time. Um, they got that, that that's smart. I mean, they need to be adding to their frontline workers. Uh, you know, the, as business picks up, and they're allowed to reopen their stores, um, that becomes very important. Hey, Nancy, great to have you with us. Um, that's, that's very important. If you haven't done it already, I know many of you posted that you did, the uh, National Retail Federations, our friends, are launching a grassroots campaign to encourage our friends in co the, pe the The congressional leaders we tolerate, how's that? May I, friends in Congress is hard words to establish America's Recovery Fund to provide additional economic relief to retailers. This would provide federal grants to struggling businesses for operational expenses to reopen and stay open. Most importantly, the fund would infuse much needed liquidity to bring businesses back up to speed and most importantly, rehire workers. Um, there is a link in the NARTS Facebook page and at narts.org slash resale strong to uh, get that uh, going. It only takes a minute to uh, contact Congress on that. A uh, couple of clicks and you'll fill it all out and um, they will know how important that message is to us. If the challenge we face doesn't scare us, then it's probably not that important. Think about that. The top 10 U.S. e-commerce retailers are... Da -da 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 -da. I know it is no surprise that number one is Amazon, but the way people are growing and the way the pandemic has shifted things, the growth of others um, is really up there. So Walmart has uh, grown to a 5.8% share, um, eBay at 4.5%, Apple at 35 Home Depot at 199 uh, Best Buy, Target, Costco, Wayfair, and Macy's, all around a percent of uh, e-commerce, uh, retail e-commerce share. But uh, the, the changes at Walmart and where they have really grown uh, with their e-commerce abilities, and part of that was their acquisition of Jet, um, have really uh, helped that. Thanks, Julie. They will get a lot. I could probably get you that number. I, ha I have some people at Duncan. Duncan's a Massachusetts company, and I, uh, when I go down to D.C. and lobby, I lobby with a couple people. So it'll be interesting to see what they get in that. And thank you, Julie, for submitting yours uh, for the, uh, to the National Retail Federation. So important right now as we get through it. Um, 
One of the things I wanted to talk about tonight, because it came up last night, okay, and several of you today about it, was the mind blow that about David and Rachel Hollis. I mean, it was breaking news here last night when it was dropped in the middle of the show. And, um, you know, that was, you know, that was a lot to process because of uh, how they've made their life, their business, and their family so, so center stage for all that they do. And it brought up an interesting, uh, thank you, Kitty. It's okay, Kristen. Late is okay. Um, it's all good. Just gr grateful to have you with us. Um, but it was an interesting conversation about it that, you know, one of the things that's being brought up out of it that's not being directly said is that, you know, them working together uh, has put a strain on their marriage. And, you know, did I think that was an issue? And yes, it is an issue. It, it's hard to, to work with your spouse, okay? It is... It is hard to be. It is hard to be in business altogether. Okay, and whether you're in it on your own, your family is always a part of it, no matter what. Even if it is you, you are a one-woman show, and it is all about you, um, and and your customers. It's hard enough when when a husband and wife, um, or a actually any family members, work together in business. It is incredibly hard. You have a lifetime together of knowing how to push each other's buttons um, to get your way. And, and one of the analogies, if you haven't heard me use it before, I talk about with, with um, you know, family and spouses and business especially, is my Ghostbusters analogy. Okay? Uh, it is hard, Astral Angie. Oh, Kitty, you know, you're, you're keeping up with the Kardashians so much that you don't know who Rachel Hollis is. <laughs> well, uh, go in your store. I bet you you have on your bookshelf in your store, Girl, Wash Your Face, or one of other Rachel Hollis's books. Okay, that's your homework tonight, Kitty. But, uh, and Lisa. But, um, they're, they're, they are a, a power couple, okay? They are a power couple. He comes from a career at Disney, okay, and organizational management, and she built this company from nothing, and now it's huge, okay? They've built a, a and, and then he left his Disney job to come, you know, work with her in their company. So they're working together all the time. They are living together all the time, they're raising their kids all the time, they're, it's just everything all the time. But it really comes back to my, in, in business, okay, and where things cross the line it, is really to think back to the original Ghostbusters movie, okay, and nothing against the remake, although remakes of any movie are hard, okay, and, and this is whenever you work with family. Okay, the Ghostbusters analogy, if everybody, if you remember, saw the original Ghostbusters movie, and I don't want to be a spoiler, so maybe turn off your sound if you never saw the original Ghostbusters movie. At the end of the original Ghostbusters movie, we're trying to save the, uh, New York City from the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And the Ghostbusters are there, and they're ready to do it. And nothing is stopping the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And... They finally decide, okay, we're going to cross our streams. And the guy's like, you said never cross the streams. When I asked you what would happen if we crossed the streams, you said bad things, really bad things would happen. Absolutely, Suki. You don't have to agree. But, but part of that comes to roles, okay? You don't cross the lines of your roles. So my point with the Ghostbusters theme is if you don't want really bad things to happen in your business when you work with family, it is you have to have defined roles. Roles so that you understand what the boundaries are for your position within the company, okay? And roles so your team members know what it is, uh, what the roles are, and who to report to for what, and so, the, so that everybody is on the same page, okay? 
it, that is that is huge in um, in things and how that rolls. So it, it is that is a thing, and and then you don't cross them because when you cross them, when you step across that line, and it's a lesson to learn. But when you step across that line, bad things happen. Okay, if Cassandra or I cross into one of the other's areas of of operational authority within the business, bad things happen. When we stay in our lane, great, you know, the company grows. So it becomes a very, uh, very important lesson on that. <laughs> Should I add more, kid? Absolutely. It's all about separate roles. It is absolutely. And when you have those separate roles, you don't cross the streams, you don't get into trouble. And um, it is hard, you know. I mean, you know, Rachel gave up a lot of her control and everything in the company, as which you have to do at, to grow your company, okay, if it's going to grow beyond you. And, and I talk from that from perspective of I know lots of really small stores, okay, that run everything as a one-woman show, and they're amazing. And they create a fabulous life for both the owner and, and uh, their family running a, a one-woman show for for. 35 years, 30-something years, there was a store, a town over from us, that uh, ran an excellent uh, small woman's boutique. Um, very small, but she was very successful, spent a lot of her summers on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and did that, and it was a one-woman show. You know, occasionally her niece helped out or something, but overall, she never had employees, she never had anybody involved, and she just did it. Uh... Absolutely. It is that separate thing, you know, because if you're trying to do things, when the streams cross, you, that's, where, that's where bad things happen. So I just wanted to share that before I got into the updated uh, politics and everything else with today. Uh, and, and to uh, circle back on that. And for those of you that don't know who the Hollises are, you know, stop watching the Kardashians, okay? I mean, you've seen enough this. Or is it this way to do a selfie? Or is it this way so I get the perfect butt shot of me? Okay, you can't see my butt. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Hey, Carrie, great to have you with us. Um, so a few different SBA things tonight. Um, just some miscellaneous housekeeping. Um, there haven't been a lot of people that I've dealt with that have gotten declines. Okay, there are a couple uh, that I've dealt with. Mostly they've been because of um, doing something stupid like changing your bank account in the middle of the application or something. But for the most part I haven't. But it is important to respond to that because those can quickly get overturned. And the quickest way is uh, either by fax or email to do that. So my friend at the uh, SBA out of Kansas, um, you know, mentioned, you know, he's like, you know, the biggest reasons that things are getting showing up as declines, and he wanted me to cover this, is unverifiable information or economic injury not substantiate. Um, and the applicant should submit evidence to verify their application represents a valid small business or nonprofit in need of economic injury disaster loan. You need to submit reports of your actual cash flows and P&L in 2018 and 2019 along with your 2020 year-to-date actuals. Copies of previous tax returns or other documented evidence demonstrating need and validity of the organization. Okay, that will get it reconsidered is uh, what my buddy out of Kansas uh, is telling me with the SBA and he asked me to cover that uh, tonight. Um, and part of that is, can be as simple, okay, okay, as simple as them not being able, for whatever reason, to get a hold of your uh, tax transcripts from the IRS. Even though you gave the authorization, you did whatever, for whatever reason, they didn't come through. I just got a letter from the IRS the other day dated April uh, 20th, I think, you know. On June 9th, it arrived in the mail, okay. Um, so, I mean... The IRS isn't the most efficient organization all the time, um, and so that is one of the reasons um, that uh, declines are coming through.
Yeah, so the, the simple tax return and the uh, IRS Form 4506-T are typical to get that reconsidered. Who has the fax? Well, you can fax from your computer, Angie. You know, you got to work on it. And most of your... Um, most of your office supply stores will still have a fax, but don't look at it as asking the question, who has a fax? And ask it as, okay, I'm not getting the answer I want from the government. The government says to fax them. Nobody else is. Other people are trying to call or email, so if I actually fax, maybe mine will get to the top of the pile. Look at it that way. Okay. Um, Hey, I remember when I had a fax in college. I, I had the cool dorm room, and I had a fax, a thermal one, in my dorm room. Okay? Nobody can call me a geek. Ah. Uh, the new PPP law changes the importance of bonuses. Okay, so we talked about this before, about giving bonuses to use up PPP money. And now that you have more time... That isn't necessarily the case. You may not have to give bonuses or hazard pay or other things, compensation to carry that out. Um, so um, just wanted to talk about that briefly, that um, that may not be uh, the, uh, the top of the thing. Um, and lastly on the PPP tonight, um, again, um, if you haven't gotten a loan, go get one. Okay, if you have payroll, get a loan. Um, because it, it's pretty easy to get it forgiven it under the new regulations. Um, the last day, the last day you can get a loan approval is June 30th. Okay, and this will expire on June 30th. Um, you can still, um, the max loan is two and a half times your average monthly payroll. You may now use the 24-week period. The forgiveness deadline now has a date. Um, you have to apply for forgiveness within 10 months of the end of your covered period, and I'm suggesting you know about 30 days after your covered period. And you can still use the 8-week or the 24-week period. And um, that is some key stuff there. And then, again, my resale reunites right there in the NARCH newsletter. If you haven't read the NARCH June newsletter, what are you waiting for? Check your email box. It is a great addition, but it also covers resale reunites, the NARCH virtual conference, virtual, okay, which will start and run from August 3rd to infinity and beyond. Um, a great uh, virtual conference for only $199 for your first uh, team member and then $99 for each additional for NARTS members. Okay. And we will get to the other side of this. And these uh, seminar topics will help you grow your way out of this. Again, you have to grow your way out of this. Um, that is what this is all about, is just growing our way out of this uh, this pandemic and uh, we are going to grow. I, I am super excited about continuing to grow our business. All right, Vina, I'm thrilled to hear you're registered. Thrilled. It's going to be so exciting and it's going to be so engaging. It's such an affordable way to not only engage yourself, but engage your team. It depends, Michelle. They're, 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 it gets into math. Um, for a lot of people, the 24 weeks is going to, some part of the 24 weeks is going to help them. For some people, the eight weeks is going to uh, do it. It's a math game. Um, and if you can be done with it sooner, the better. Um, but if you... Uh, Um, if you are, um, it, you know, unsure, we'll do your math again, Michelle. Just uh, send me an email and I'll call you and we'll do the math. Angie, you know, that Rachel Hollis's first event, that's when it, like, I got it. Because I, I'm an in-person, I'm a hugger, I'm a smiler. 
uh, I need that. You know, I mean, this, this virtual class is watching Rebecca finish her semester virtually uh, for her last semester in college. You know, I need the engagement of an in-person class in a general sense. But when I saw Rachel Hollis's actual class and day, I was so impressed with what they did. And was it perfect? No. Okay, did they have technical issues? You bet ya. Um, but the, it was such a, a great um, event, and it was going to be in a stadium of, what, five or 10,000 people? I mean, um, watching uh, Cassandra was signed up for it, and uh, Nebraska Angie was signed up for it, and uh, just seeing them, how they did that, uh, really inspired uh, part of how we're doing this. Barb has joined us. And I am glad you're registered, Asheville Angie. That is very good. So that is what is happening. Hang on a second. We got to get some everyday courage while we're here because Vina sent us this book. Vina sent us. She also sent me a great bar book, but but this book whole <laughs> does more for our overall day to day. Let's see. Have the courage to make the change, the strength to see you through it, and the faith that everything will turn out to the, for the best. Boom. And it will. Have faith. Have faith. Hey, Suzanne. Good to have you with us. For those of you, every night I'm here live, live in the Narts private Facebook group at 8 o'clock Eastern. 8 o'clock Eastern. I'm here, live, for you, the members of Narts. For those of you that are not uh, members, this video, this video goes on replay at narts.org slash resale strong so we can share it with the entire world. The entire world it can be shared with. We want everybody to get to the other side of this. No business. You are not alone running this store. All the resources, everything I talk about are printed back over on narts.org slash resale strong so we can share it with everybody. That's how we get ourselves. That's how we help everybody else get to the other side. When you have a question you don't know the answer to, when you don't know where your math is, whether you should do 8, 24, 16, 32, hut. Okay, football is going to come back, right? Um, and I wasn't a football player either, but hey. Um... We will, get, we will get to the other side, but that's narts.org slash resale strong. When you have a question nobody else can answer, when you don't know the answer for your own personal situation, you email me, neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com is how you get a hold of me. I'll be back here again tomorrow night, live at 8 o'clock Eastern, live at 8 o'clock Eastern. For those of you that were not here at the top of the program, we start every day and night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book from our buddy Lynn manuel Miranda. I mean, I think you should be a guest person on this show some night. I think we should get him, see if we can get him to read the book or something, you know? For those of you that were not here at the beginning, our good morning today was good morning. Don't get stuck in the comment section of life today. Make do. Create the things. Let others tussle it out. Vamos! Our good night tonight is good night. The world's clickbait. Pull you off your path. Unplug. Explore. Dream new terrain. The world keeps spinning. Ademois. I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good wedding. I do like a barber's truck. Quite honestly, I like just a good party where you're at it. I'll be back here live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Till then, I'm on narts.org slash resale strong, the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store. And email me, neil at ecistores.com. Neil at ecistores.com. That'll get you a call back from a 508 number. Going to make a lot of calls tomorrow after I take Nana to the surgeon to get her checked on. Uh, supposed to come out of the cast tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. And then I will be uh, dialing up people all afternoon. That is what's happening. But no, no matter what, you...
And you, but most especially you, are not alone running this store. It's dinner time, everybody. Have a great night.